Hi, Penny Lane here. In this video, I'm going to talk about entering your job costs. Your bills, your vendor credits, your credit card charges, and even your credit card refunds can be entered either in QuickBooks Online or JobTread and show up on your job budget as an actual cost to the project. It is incredible bi-directional integration. Some of the benefits of entering your costs directly in JobTread are if you'd like to use purchase orders. Purchase orders are non-posting and they're not something that talk back and forth between JobTread and QuickBooks Online. So if you wanna use purchase orders, you probably wanna keep your job cost entry directly in JobTread. Another benefit of entering your costs directly in JobTread is that you can ensure that the job cost is landing on the correct line of the budget. This is particularly important for those clients who have really detailed budgets in which they need to have all of the costs aligned exactly. Let's take a look at what it looks like to enter a cost directly in JobTread. First, we'll click on jobs, then we'll click on a project. And for he from here, we're gonna click on plus document. Notice at the bottom, we can create a bill, a credit, an expense, or a refund. To create a credit or a refund, you're gonna enter the transaction as a negative number. For this example, we're gonna go ahead and enter a bill. I'm gonna choose vendor, and then I'm gonna choose a line item from my budget. Please note that when we are entering costs, and of course, when we're viewing our budget, we can view and enter our costs by cost group, which is how the budget is originally put together if it's put together using cost groups, um, cost code, allowances, or uh, I like cost code. And if you wanted to enter just to the top line here, our entry is going to evenly distribute our costs over all of the line items below. So that's a really important thing to know. If we're going to enter this into a particular line item on our budget, let's say we're going to put this into septic, we would enter it like so. From here, I'm going to click create. When we get here, make sure that you set your date if you need to. Perhaps we need to backdate this. Here we can put the vendor's bill number. Notice we've got push to QuickBooks Online. If for any reason you need to enter a cost into JobTread that you don't want to show up in QuickBooks Online, for example, when you're entering historical transactions, you would toggle this off. But the beautiful thing is leaving it toggled on so we can see our bill show up in QuickBooks. Here we have a choice. We can push it as a bill, as an expense, and the reason why this says clearing expense is because I have a bank account called clearing. So this is saying I want to push this to that bank account as an expense. So we've got clearing, our savings account, uh, we could push it as an expense to our Visa card um, or an expense from our bank account. And if this was negative, we would be able to push these credits or refunds. Uh, for this example, I'm gonna push it to a bill and then I'm going to click save. This isn't gonna show up for me in QuickBooks Online until I approve it for payment. So I'm gonna approve it for payment. Now let's go over to QuickBooks Online and see what it looks like over there. Awesome, if we go to our bills, here it is. Right over in QuickBooks Online. Notice that the cost is showing up in the product or service area. Again, the products and services are how JobTread and QuickBooks talk to each other. So you'll always see your job-related costs showing up down here in the product or service area. This also means that when you enter your costs directly into QuickBooks Online, you need to make sure that you're using the product service area in order to do so. Let's take a look at what it looks like to enter a cost directly in QuickBooks Online. And before we do this, I wanna show you the preference that you might need to turn on if you don't see that item details section on your expense forms. You'll go into account and settings, you'll go into expenses, under here under bills and expenses, click the little pencil and make sure that you have this toggled on Show items table on expense and purchase forms. In QuickBooks Online, we can enter our costs as normal. You can enter an expense, a check, a bill. For this example, we're gonna enter a credit card expense directly into QuickBooks Online for framing materials from Home Depot. I wanna point out a couple of things first. Because we're entering our costs directly in QuickBooks Online, 
it's really easy to miss the mark on the budget. I don't know if you've ever looked at a budget versus actual report in any system and seen all kinds of crazy stuff where you had costs mapped to cost codes that you didn't even have on your budget. And that can definitely happen. For example, we're gonna use framing materials. And I wanna point out too that we can view our budget in a lot of different ways. And when we're entering our costs directly into QuickBooks, we are entering them to the cost code. So if we're entering our costs directly into JobTread, we have the option to enter them to the cost item. But when we're entering them into QuickBooks Online, we only have the cost code. So to make sure that I'm using the right cost code, I wanna make sure that I'm viewing my budget by cost code. If we click here, we can see that right now we're looking at our budget by cost group. Let's check out and see what our budget looks like by cost code. All right, cool. I know I've got cost code 06.2 and I know that my job name is James Fox Residence. When we get to QuickBooks, we'll click plus new, select expense, our vendor is Home Depot. This is coming out of our Visa account. We're gonna use the item details tab. We're gonna enter it to our cost code, framing materials. Let's just call it $214. And when we choose our customer project, see how easy it would be to go wrong here. We wanna make sure that we're choosing this one, James Fox Residence, that's what matches JobTread. Then click Save and Close. When we get over here to JobTread under our framing materials, sure enough, there's our Home Depot expense. You can also see it here in Documents. Keep in mind that if I delete an expense or a bill in JobTread or in QuickBooks Online, it's gonna delete in both places, which is great. This bi-directional sync is fabulous and it helps to ensure that our data stays in sync. I think you'll find that when you set it up with the correct workflows and stay really focused on making sure that all of your costs are entered accurately, your client and you are gonna absolutely love JobTread for your cost entry. A couple of important things to keep in mind. If you delete a transaction that's connected to a transaction in JobTread and QuickBooks Online, it's gonna delete it in JobTread, and vice versa. If I delete a transaction in JobTread, it's gonna delete that in QuickBooks Online. Additionally, if I pay a bill in QuickBooks Online, it's gonna show as paid in JobTread. And same thing if I mark it paid in JobTread, it's gonna show paid in QuickBooks Online. Keep in mind also that if I enter a transaction in JobTread for a period in QuickBooks Online that is closed, if I enter a closing date in QuickBooks Online and I enter a transaction in JobTread for that date, it's not going to show up in QuickBooks Online. And remember, anytime you're wondering about unsynced records or if you're having a problem, you can go to Settings, Integrations, QuickBooks Online, and click here to see any unsynced records. This bi-directional sync is what provides us with so much confidence in our data and it makes our lives so much easier as accountants. I think that once you get your workflows established, you're gonna find that you and your clients love job costing in JobTread and QuickBooks Online. If you have any questions, contact support at jobtread.com.